For more on the threat posed by ISIL and other militant groups in Egypt, we turn to our panel. Joining us from Cairo is Khaled Dawood. He's a professor at the American University in Cairo and deputy editor-in-chief at al Ahram Weekly. Here with us in the studio is Graham Bannerman. He's a scholar at the Middle East Institute and a former analyst with the U.S. State Department. Abdel Bariatwan is the editor-in-chief of Rai al Yum, an Arabic independent newspaper. He joins us from London. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Khaled, let me start with you. We look at this attack last week in Egypt, more than 300 people killed, and as we said, the worst terrorist attack in Egypt's modern history. How much of a challenge is this, not just for President al-Sisi, but also for the Egyptian people? Is it time for the Egyptian people to come together right now and take on this threat? Well, um, indeed, we've been facing this uh, threat for over four years right now, since the removal of uh, former uh, President and Muslim Brotherhood leader uh, Mohamed Morsi, uh, there has been a rise in the uh, uh, terrorist attacks in Egypt and particularly in Sinai. Uh, the major uh, problem and uh, what actually uh, made uh, many Egyptians worried uh, is that despite uh, the army activity in Sinai over the past four years, those militants are still able uh, to gather themselves in big numbers and at this time uh, they are attacking a very local target represented in a mosque where uh, uh, hundreds of worshippers were basically performing their Friday prayer. Um, it has never happened before in Egypt's history uh, that a mosque was attacked or that such a huge number of people all die in one uh, incident uh, such as the way uh, it happened in the village of uh, Roda uh, in northern Sinai. So of course uh, uh, this poses a major challenge for uh, President Sisi and for the regime. Uh, and immediately after uh, this uh, attack took place, we saw the president uh, yesterday uh, asking the uh, uh, army chief of staff uh, that he has uh, to get done or to rid Egypt of uh, terrorism and Sinai in particular in a matter of uh, three months. And many people are wondering whether this target that was set by the president is a realistic target considering that the fact that the, the army has not been able to get done with the job in four years, so why should it be done in three months? Graham, we heard some of the reasons why uh, we have this rising extremism in Egypt. But how did Egypt become this hotbed for this kind of violent extremism? Well, I think it, it's part of the regional conflict that's going on. I mean, Egypt is one of the areas in which there's been a struggle between an international Islamic movement and, in particular in Egypt, a rising nationalist movement in Egypt. And I think if you saw the revolution of 2013, What's been lost here, certainly in Washington, is that it was very nationalistic in Orient. They were rejecting this international movement. Clearly, for the international Islamic movement of, the, of radical extremists, they, they see Egypt as essential for winning the, the struggle throughout the region, as do the Egyptians see it's essential for themselves to prevail against this movement. And I think that this is all part of that larger movement. And with the collapse of ISIS in Syria and Iraq, there's also the worry that more people will move to Egypt and try to focus their struggle there. I think this, we're into a very crucial period of time and the Egyptian government and the Egyptian people are at the heart of the struggle and the rest of us have to, on the outside area have to see how it goes. So is the feeling among those who carry out these attacks that on the one hand they are aimed at weakening al-Sisi, on the other hand they're also aimed at perhaps implementing their own will on the people there? No, I think, it's, I think these attacks, particularly, for example, they've tried to divide the Egyptian people from the Egyptian government. That has been essential to their success. They haven't been very successful at that. And if I were to speculate, looking at past Egyptian history, for example, in November of 1997, there was a very active, hostile, is, uh, fundamentalist movement against the government, and they massacred 62 tourists in Luxor. That had the exact opposite impact on Egypt. The, it, it almost killed off the movement immediately because the Egyptian people said, this is not us. The question is, with this response to this horrific act in, in Sinai, will the Egyptian people react the same way? Yes, we can't. This is not Egyptians. We do not massacre our own people. We do not attack mosques. We need to pull together. Will we disagree with the government on many things? We need to support this anti-terrorist movement. Or will they be able, will the terrorists have succeeded in dividing the people from the government of Egypt? That's what we'll have to see over the next three months. Abdel Bariatwan in London, what does this attack tell us about security in Egypt? Do these militants pose any kind of a major threat to stability in the country? Well, incidentally, uh, I am originated from Rafah, which is not far away from the massacre place. So I know the area. Uh, 
Very well. Uh, I, I think, you know, Sinai, as Mr. Khaled said, you know, always alienated, no man land, and uh, marginalized by the several uh, Egyptian government. Uh, I believe now uh, it is a very crucial uh, state of, uh, you know, the terrorist organization, whether in Sinai or in Syria and Iraq and other parts of the Arab world. So when I say it is a crucial time, you know, the Islamic State, which most likely to be behind this massacre, now is behaving like a wounded tiger. They lost their caliphate, they lost their territories, they lost most of their supporters or their actually uh, followers and uh, uh, recruiters. So I think now they are moving to plan B, which is the underground, that terrorism uh, revenge from all those people who did fight it. So I'm not surprised if many people uh, or many fighters of the Islamic State moved to Sinai long time ago before the defeat in Egypt, uh, before the defeat in Syria and Iraq and took place there. And now they are trying to take revenge. And I'm not also surprised if they move to other places like Yemen, like Libya, like uh, Afghanistan, and so on. So I believe now uh, what happened in Sinai is a huge challenge to the Egyptian government. Definitely it is a setback, you know, for, for uh, these terrorist organizations or groups to send cars uh, and attack the mosque and uh, massacring 300 people. It is a huge setback. And I believe, you know, after four years or, or three years of fighting these terrorist uh, organization in Sinai, why there is no progress, why it is deteriorating uh, months after months, why those people have the upper hands, how they manage to reach their destination. Is it corruption, for example? Is it uh, inefficiency, for example? Is it, you know, that they are, uh, you know, more lethal than many people expected? Is there any underestimation of their strength and their backers and their supporters? How they manage to get these weapons? Uh, smuggling through what? Through uh, Libya, for example? Uh, through the, uh, Israel? We don't know. So I believe this, this huge challenge facing the Egyptian government uh, you know, had to be actually uh, confronted. And there should be also not only security measures, not only using the army, there should be also good intelligence service, good intelligent cooperation, and also some ideological, uh, you know, counterattack from the government, from the people there. We know Sinai is a, tri a tribal society, the tribes playing very major role there. And this definitely attack would like to actually split the tribal society and to attack that tribes which actually supporting the government, supporting the Egyptian government and Al-Sisi government. I agree with uh, my colleague Khaled here uh, to set a target of three months to root out these mm -hmm. organization, terrorist organization. I believe it is, it is uh, hugely exaggerated. I believe there should be a long-term strategy, uh, and this strategy should be ideological cooperation in the service matters and their uh, exchange, and also uh, ideological uh, some sort of counterattack from the government, from the media, from the people there, and try to establish good relation with the tribes who are against this kind of terrorism.